thank you for providing the, me the opportunity to talk about my research as a young scientist. Uh, I would like to bring your attention back to the ongoing Amazon project and uh, talk about the anthropogenic influence on isoprene chemistry over Amazonian. Uh, to begin with, I would like to acknowledge all my co-authors from uh, both the U.S. side and the Brazilian side, uh, and also the Go Amazon research team in total. Uh, so we have heard a lot about uh, isoprene in the past one week. Uh, isoprene is a dominant biogenic VOC species emitted from the Earth. Uh, the atmospheric oxidation of isoprene uh, can have large influence on the oxidation capacity of the atmosphere and also contribute significantly to SOM formation. Uh, so if uh, globally speaking, the isoprene emission uh, is highest, uh, is most vigorous in the tropical region, especially over Amazonia. In the uh, opening speech talk by uh, uh, Paulo, we already know that uh, the Amazon Basin is experiencing very rapid urbaniz urbanization and uh, also uh, uh, land use change. So in this context, uh, a very important uh, scientific question raised to the atmospheric uh, chemist is, uh, how will the anthropogenic activity going to change isoprene chemistry over Amazonian? To start to discuss about this question, uh, let's have a brief review about what we know about isoprene chemistry. Isoprene uh, primarily oxidized by OH radical and forms proxy radicals. Uh, Proxy radical can react with either NO, HO2, or other L2 radical or isomerize. So, the, and the forms a very different set of oxidation products. For example, the reaction with NO, uh, the major first generation products are methylvinylketone and the methacrylate. Uh, MVK and ACR. They are isomeric uh, C4 companions. Uh, for HO2 pathway, the major first generation products are isoprene hydroperoxides, and the further reaction of isoprene hydroperoxides can lead to isoprene uh, epoxy diodes. Uh, 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 Jason has talked a lot about in the conference. Uh, so the, the, uh, the, this two pathway also has a very different SOA yield and uh, also tracers. So in the real atmosphere, people think uh, the HO2 pathway and the uh, NO pathway are the dominant competing pathways for isoprene proxy radical. However, some recent studies suggest the isomerization pathway are very important too, especially in remote region. So with the uh, intensified human activity over Amazonia, an uh, important question is how will the human activity going to change relative importance for these pathways and by how much? And uh, also, what other aspects could human activity affect the isoprene chemistry? So the Go Amazon campaign provides a very good opportunity to investigate these uh, questions in our natural laboratory. Uh, Lindsay already gave a very good overview about uh, the site we're making measurement in the T3. Uh, one thing I want to emphasize is this location is very carefully chosen. If we look at the back trajectory, here is T3, here is uh, T1 is Manaus. From the, we can see how the air mass sometimes coming from T3, uh, sorry, from, from Manaus, or sometimes uh, from the surrounding forest. So the fetch of the T3 oscillate between the extreme of a Princeton atmosphere and the interreaction of uh, the uh, pollution from Manaus with natural environment. There have been a lot of instruments employed in the T3 site. Uh, will be very useful to, for, to address the isoprene photochemistry question. Uh, for today, I'm going to focus on the PTR top MS I'm operating. 
PTR top MS stands, um, uh, stands for protein transfer reaction time of line mass spectrometry. It's a, a chemical ionization mass spectrometry using hydronium ion as a reagent ion. Uh, for most VOC, the protein transfer reaction will occur. For example, for isoprene and BKMACR, they will form protonated ions. Uh, however, this a uh, soft ionization technique is actually not that soft. Uh, we, what we have known is, for example, for isoprene hydroperoxides, the protonated ion, as far as I know, it has not been detected in any laboratory study or in the field. So, but in this study, it will be very useful if we can measure isoprene hydroperoxides in the PTR analysis. So what PTR uh, isoprene hydroperoxides fragment two in PTR? Uh, a recent study from our group uh, shed some light to this question. So it's a, a chamber study. We investigate isoprene photochemistry in a steady state chamber. Uh, we do it under NO dominant condition and HO2 passive dominant condition, respectively. Uh, Compa compared to the traditional way to use PTR mass, we end a cold trap in front of upstream of a PTR to slightly remove uh, low, volati low volatile organic compounds. What we find out is under L dominant condition, the signal of MVK, MACR ion, and the isoprene, they don't change when the uh, trap temperature decreases from room temperature to the minus 40 degrees C. However, we see something really different under HO2 dominant condition. The MVK, MACR signal, which is C4H7O, dropped about like 80 percent. So it means there is something less volatile contributing to this ion. Uh, we have to do a lot of uh, uh, additional analysis. So it uh, suggests that this uh, condensing species are mainly uh, isoprene hydroperoxides. Here shows one evidence. For example, when we uh, increase residence time of the, our chamber, we found that the, uh, the, the signal of a condensing species in the red color decrease with the increased residence time, which is that it's a first generation product. So uh, we also found at like around minus 40 degrees C, uh, we will not, if we keep decreasing the temperature, we won't see more condensed with these compounds. Means the, these compounds can uh, fully removed at minus 40 degrees C. So we're wondering, it might be a good way for us to quantify or like at least measure isoprene hydroperoxides in the field. So in this campaign, we uh, try to alternatively measure ambient air directly and uh, through a cold trap at a temperature of minus 40 degrees C. So the uh, MVK and ACR signal would be equal to the uh, C4H7O signal through the cold trap. And the, the uh, signal difference between non-trap or the cold trap would be the isoprene hydroperoxides. Now, uh, now I will show you some preliminary result. Uh, March 10th is one of the few very sunny day in the wet season. And uh, uh, the top panel shows you NO and NOY. During that day, during daytime, we see very high NO, uh, NOY concentration in the morning. And it is, uh, goes to very low in the afternoon. Consistently, we see the M equivalent MVK MSR concentration, which assuming all this uh, C4H7O signal from MVK MSR, the trap data is uh, in green, and uh, the non-trap data is in uh, red. We will see at in the morning when NOx are high, those two data agree very well. However, when the uh, NOx uh, level drops, these two data can start to diverge. So we can see this difference would be isoprene hydroperoxides. This is very exciting um, for me to uh, see this result for the first time because um, it's great to see like what you have seen find out in the lab actually really occurs in the real ambient. Uh, however, it's less exciting if you look at how small the isoprene hydroperoxide is. It's only like 20% uh, of the MVK and MACR signal. 
So what does it mean? I try to do very, very simple box model to have a little bit more chemical insight. So um, I assume like well-mixed boundary layer and consider emission and the reactions in, uh, using master chemical mechanism. Uh, and I fix the OH and HO2 concentration and varying the NO concentration to change the relative ratio of uh, reaction rate of HO2 and NO pathway. Uh, what we find out is the model uh, concentration ratio of isoprey hyperoxides and MAKMACR actually is always smaller than the relative reaction rate ratio, which means uh, which means uh, what we see, the small fraction of hydroperoxide we see actually may indicate much more higher cons uh, the reaction rate co uh, ratio. So now we are trying uh, to uh, calibrate the instrument for isoprey hydroperoxide from the Frank Koich group and uh, we will definitely will refine the model to have a better understanding of this question. Another, uh, another aspect which is a little bit unexpected is uh, we also found that during on March 10th uh, when the uh, NOx concentration drops there is a huge significant increase of isoprey concentration from two, uh, 1 ppb to 8 ppb. This, uh, this strong contrast actually also be observed in aircraft measurement. Here we see the uh, isoprey, uh, the, the plume going from T1 Manaus to T3 along the pathway. We see isoprey concentration dipped along the pathway. So does this indicate that uh, the, there are more oxidation when the, uh, there is uh, ethylprogenic influence? Oh, well, like uh, there will be many factors need to be considered. For example, the emission source may not be homogeneous. So we try to look at a different parameter, the relative uh, ratio of MVK and MACR concentration to isoprey, which is uh, often used uh, indicator for degree of oxidation. What we found is the red dot uh, uh, of, uh, agrees very well with the NOI. And uh, this is not happens during that one day. If you look at the whole data of the whole campaign, you will see very good correlation of MV, the MVK and MACR ratio to isoprey with NOI. Of course, this observed depend could be a mixed effect of enhanced oxidation and the shift chemistry. More work need to you know s uh, separate them the two. To summarize, uh, I think the data analysis of the first IOP is still preliminary, but I do think we observed uh, shifted R2 chemistry with anthropogenic influence and also probably enhanced oxidation. Uh, of course, more work need to be done to make more conclusive uh, uh, result. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ping Yu. And we have time for some questions. Uh, if, okay, Paul. Thank you. Um, that was interesting. Um, do you have any idea what the yield should be down the channel to make that? I mean, do, do your measurements, given a typical PTR sensitivity for you know, something with oxygenase, do, do they quantitatively make sense? Uh, you mean the, the amount of isoprey hydroperoxide? Yeah. Uh, I think it's really a, a question. Um, Depends on the sensitivity, like uh, if isoprey hydroperoxide fragment to other ions, which we are not know without the standard. Uh, I think, to my understanding, I think the result does make sense if you look at the simple box model, uh, which uh, if you want to have like a point, point 0.2 of isoprey and MACR ratio, if this is like a you probably need around like 0.2 to 0.05 ppb of NO, which is really kind of makes sense in terms of like you can imagine about the NOx level in a uh, Princeton environment. But of course, this is a very simple box model. 
Okay, um, one more question here. Hey, um, nice presentation. So, okay, so this is very recent work and we don't know much about it. And from what you say, of course, this should be very important in very like non-polluted sunny areas such as the rainforest. Um, I would like you to comment on how good is these representative models in general, not in this simple model, but in more evolved models. Is this taken into account or not yet? Uh, sorry, do you mean how the result can be used in the global model? Is that the question? Yeah, as in, well, as in like the effect of these isoperox, uh, isopods, um, included in the models, because this should be important from, for tropical areas. Uh, I think isoprene hydroperoxide has already been included in most global models. Uh, it's just uh, like there have to be very few study about direct measurement of isoprene hydroperoxide over Amazon and uh, like uh, to really quantify how important it is. Um, yeah.